I will get to some serious stuff in a second, but there was just a lot of other weird stuff that happened today that I thought I might begin our conversation with tonight, including if today felt just a, just a little bit different than every other day, if you felt like you had not enough time to get around and do whatever it is that you did today, well, guess what? You are not incorrect because a very strange scientific reason means that today, July the 9th, is the shortest day in the history of the world. Apparently, it is one nanosecond shorter than the average day because of the rotation of the Earth and apparently the fact that the planet is getting ever so slightly smaller. Again, the explanation that comes here via uh, an American news website, I think this one, yeah. Earth is expected to complete a full rotation on the 9th of July at roughly 1.3 milliseconds less than the standard 86,400 seconds that define a 24-hour day. With that time difference, imperceptible to humans, it does represent a broader pattern that has left scientists scratching their heads for years. After thousands of years of the Earth slowing down, Earth has been spinning faster in recent years constantly breaking records for its shortest days. Now, again, if you felt like today just was a millisecond faster, everything was a little bit, yes, because of the Earth's rotation and it getting smaller. I told you, it was a weird day today. As I mentioned, can you believe there is a government anywhere in Australia that would tell you how much time you have to spend playing with your puppy well, that is apparently exactly what the ACT Parliament is seriously considering. Dog owners must spend three hours minimum with their pets under a new proposed animal welfare law. Now, I have no... Again, this is one of those things where... And all of us care about animal welfare and all of us want to make sure that the, the, the pets and puppies and budgies and fish and all the rest of it in our lives live great lives, OK? No question about that. But how are you supposed to prove it? Are you supposed to somehow sort of like the old punch-in, punch-out clock? Are you supposed to put a stepper on Rover? Is a council ranger going to follow you around? This is one of those things where it will be a, a recommendation. But if it's going to be potentially enforceable, how will it ever be enforced? The ACT government, and I know there are a lot of good people who watch us in the ACT, but the joke still stands. In terms of its government, it is much more like a local council than it is a state parliament. Obviously, the Northern Territory has fewer people, but a much bigger area, but certainly of the ter territories and states, it's, it's small. And sometimes its priorities, in my opinion, are also a little small, OK? Now, again, have a look at this. Under the draft code of practice for the welfare, dogs, welfare of dogs in the ACT, Features a number of mandatory standards, including restricting surgical barking, debarking, good, I, that's weird, and making it compulsory for owners to provide animals with human contact for a reasonable length of time, three hours minimum. Now, again, the code will include guidelines, blah, 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 and apparently have some issues around retractable leads. Uh, again, just, just think this through for a second, OK? Now, if you've got, like, a really active dog, you might be able to get three hours of cuddle time or walking in. OK, fine, fair enough. What do you do with a rabbit? What do you do with a snake? And who's going to police this? Believe it or not, a great free thinker that is John Roscombe has a strong opinion about this because he sent the story to me to talk about when we have a chat a little bit later in the show, a passionate pet owner himself. How would he feel about a government or somebody following you around with a clicker telling you whether it's OK or not to spend more time with your pet? Fair dinkum. 